Happy Friday and thanks for watching This Week in Discovery News. I'm Trace and each week I lay out the top stories of the last seven days plus your social media comments. This week, did you know that cats are good for you? It's true. And it turns out that Mars has plate tectonics, maybe. And Amelia Earhart's plane may have been found at the bottom of the Pacific. You'll have to wait and see. Let's dig in. The truth about cats, they're good for us. Now, we all know there are dog people and there are cat people. There are parrot people, there are ferret people, there are iguana people. My aunt had one. Its name was Reggie. But where was I meow? Oh, right, cats. It seems to me that cat people are pretty ambivalent about dogs, but dog people really seem to hate cats. Like, a lot. Flash. Cats invade United States. U.S. Army, involved in European operations, cannot stop the flow of cats. Call in the dogs! Release the gerbils and do it now! We got a war going on out there, Mrs. Peacock! A tabloid recently linked cat ownership to certain types of brain cancer. And this caused quite the feline backlash, so a publication named Biology Letters fired back with a study showing the exact opposite effect. In fact, dog and cat ownership decrease certain types of cancer. Take non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, for example. Now, this specific type of cancer attacks the blood, and it's pretty nasty. However, the longer the duration of pet ownership, the less likely it is that you will suffer from this type of cancer. Another study showed that if you expose children to pets during their first year of life, they will now have increased resistance to upper respiratory infections and illnesses. Additionally, mental health benefits of dog and cat ownership are well documented. This whole debate began because of a microscopic parasite named Toxoplasma gondii. Meow, cats carry this parasite, and it's been linked to certain types of brain cancers. However, the links are tenuous at best, so really the whole debate is a little premature. Stalk over to discoverynews.com slash goodkitty right meow to get the lowdown. And as long as we're talking about mysteries, have pieces of Amelia Earhart's plane been located? If you've been hiding under a rock this year, you probably haven't heard that the Discovery Channel and Tiger are looking for Amelia Earhart, and they are hot on their trail. If by hot on their trail, I mean that they have a photo that might have some of the parts of the plane on it. Using state-of-the-art imaging technology, they may have found bits of the plane underwater. However, Tiger is having trouble with their extreme exploratory <laughs> underwater archaeology. <laughs> It's not that they haven't found anything, they're just being cautious, and they wouldn't want to cry wolf, Virginia or otherwise. Plagued by a number of technical issues and a difficult environment, Tiger found what was an interesting debris field. Using forensic analysis, they think that it looks very similar to a Lockheed Electra aircraft that Earhart was flying, and now they just have to figure out how to get down there and see. If you want to know more, check out discoverynews.com slash Earhartfound for the details. And as this is the anniversary of the 2011 Virginia earthquake, the next story is rather appropriate. Shift happens, Mars may have plate tectonics. You might be surprised to know that we are the only known planet in the solar system to have quakey ground. And in case you don't know why that happens, plate tectonics and whatnot, let me give you a brief rundown. So here's how it works. The Earth's crust floats on the mantle, and it's broken into several dozen chunks or plates. When those plates float around, they occasionally bump or pop into each other, and we feel those as earthquakes. Now, it's all cool. If you want more information, feel free to go and Google it. But otherwise, we thought we were the only planet in the solar system with this phenomenon. But that may not be true. A scientist named Ann Yin looked at Valles Marineris, a giant canyon on Mars that, if it were on Earth, would stretch from New York to L.A. and would be five times deeper than the Grand Canyon. It's so big! How it formed is a mystery, but after analyzing hundreds of NASA images from orbiting probes, Ann Yin believes that it's based on a tectonic system. This could be big news, because Mars' system is simpler than Earth's, with only two tectonic plates as opposed to seven, shedding light on what Earth's system used to be like. Plus, we could go there and experience a Mars quake, because it can't be an earthquake, because it's not on Earth, it's a Mars quake, because it's on Mars. What up? Fly over to discoverynews.com slash marsquakes to get the shakedown. So that's all for this week. If you want more of our coverage, make sure that you like us on Facebook, you follow us on Twitter, and that you check out our Tumblr. We also have a Discovery newsletter. You can subscribe to that and get links to our social media at discoverynews.com. Keep commenting and tweeting. I read them all. And we'll see you next week in Discovery News. How is one shifty? I'm all sweaty! I don't know. That?
Is that shifty? People, I'm just rambling now. I'm just talking away. It is not by a marinaris. This is a really awkward sentence to say out loud. Although that would be a sassy name. That's how I'm gonna guess it was pronounced. Six meows. Six meows.